What's up, YouTube? The work day is done. Um, I stopped at Dollar Tree. Something that I do several times a week, hoping to find something new. Really no luck, but I did see something new, but nothing big to brag on. So, real quick. Um, I get these oils from the local beauty supply store. They're about $3. Um, they're by Via Natural. I get the coconut oil. I like using it on my synthetic wigs to help moisturize them. You can use this on your hair, your skin. I use it on my nail cuticles. You know, like when you're in that second week of a pedicure, put these on your cuticles and it makes it look like you just got a pedicure. This is tea tree oil, which is supposed to be very, very good for you. Um, you could use it on your hair, your scalp, your body. They say it's good for your skin. I have oily skin, so I really don't, wouldn't put this on my face, but maybe other parts of my body. So I got that. More uh, tweezers, because if you ever watched a Get Ready With Me video, I did two so far, I can never find my tweezers, and I know I have millions of them. And I have a love-hate relationship with Dollar Tree candles, but some of them smell amazing in Dollar Tree, and then when I go home and light them, they don't give off a good throw. The old Williamsburg candles do. And this is honey, honeydew melon. And let me tell you something, this smells like honeydew. Sweet, ripe honeydew. And um, I got the watermelon ones, old Williamsburg. They come in like little mason jars. They um, smell like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. It's amazing. I picked up some snacks, which I'm not going to show y'all. You're not going to see what I'd be snacking on. Uh, <laughs> oh, help me, Lord. And then I got um, some more eyeshadow brushes. Um, these are pretty good. This is from Wet n Wild. So I got two, and I probably have more. Um, I have to look. Because uh, sometimes I go to Dollar Tree, and I put the bag down, and I forget what I bought. But that's about it. Um, enough of Dollar Tree. I read the article from the New York Times and I did read bits and pieces of it before. It really breaks down the history of the Trinitaris gang, how it was formed, when it was formed, um, and just tells you who they are, what they, you know, they're, you know how you, uh, go to a website and they have a mission statement. It kind of tells you like the rules, um, they seem to be pretty organized, um, and they seem to really look out for each other. Besides that, they are very brutal, and um, it listed two other people that were killed by them, um, and it also let you know that in the month of June that there were several other knife attacks, and they also were involved with the knife attack of that young boy. Um, that was stabbed on the Bronx River Parkway a few days before Junior uh, was killed. After reading the article, it did state, um, somebody had mentioned in the comments of, the, of, I think it was the Get Ready For Me, or maybe it was the video from last night, that Junior's brother had said that he was home the night before. It didn't say that Junior was hanging out in the streets, but it's just, it could have been him walking home, him walking from a store. It said that he was starting to hang out at these Adams apartments or something and maybe there um, because this gang had been cruising the area um, maybe that's when they seen him it did mention the altercation that I told you guys about that his friend had with them and uh, he had asked Junior for help and Junior froze and the boy ran off and they chased him down and stabbed him up but he survived and Junior had shared this story with a friend who Junior said that he felt like he had just been involved in a gang-related incident and that something could happen to him. And the friend stated it did. So, it's just a lot, y'all. From Genesis now stating that she's seen one of them to um, Jason... Um, if you read in the comments, Jason allegedly is Genesis' ex-boyfriend. And so that's why he didn't go to the house. Uh, but still, I'm sorry, y'all. 
whether he's Genesis ex-boyfriend or not. And I don't know why Leandra wouldn't share that with us, saying, you know, Jason, you know, she just made it seem like that was, I thought he was Junior's age. He's a grown man. Um, that just makes it even crazier because why wouldn't you come pick up the money? I don't care if you don't deal with Genesis no more. Why you have that boy walking? But then, like I told you guys this morning, we really don't know. Because I know when I used to sneak out, my older sisters helped me. Like, I used to love going over, that was my excuse, going over my older sister's house. Because I knew from there, they would let me go out. You know what I mean? So, who knows? Jason could have been an excuse for Junior to venture out. It says in the article that he had started hanging out with some boys. And he did know, uh, he was not, you know, well, friends with boys that were in the Bloods. Was it the Crips? one gang i think it was the crips and he did know he did know people in gangs he's young and he's in high school he knew people in gangs it didn't mean that he had to be in a gang but um he wanted to probably hang out and if you know seems like lasandra like i said it seemed like she had a tight leash on him and again my kids i had no problems they were very obedient they were good in school but once they started liking girls and became teenagers i always tell people Little kids, little problems. Big kids, big problems. So, we really don't know what he was starting to get involved with. I And, for, and when I say that, I'm not saying he was in a gang. I don't think he was in a gang, so please. That's not what I mean. But we don't know if he just wanted to get out and hang out more. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, there's nothing happening late at night. But sometimes trouble. Okay? And it just could have been a wrong place, wrong time thing. It was a wrong place, wrong time. And it's really, really sad. But if that man, Jason, really did call and ask for the money, I don't know. And I have seen people, and this is not me, so please do not attack me. I have seen people. I have seen people in their videos criticize Leandra. And say, why would she let her son? She knew it was a bad area. She shouldn't have let him go out. She should have said no. Again, I hope she's not beating herself out about that, up about this. Because, again, my interpretation of it is that she thought he probably was out right outside. Okay? And Junior was going right downstairs. Because she called him and said, what's going on? You're taking too long. You understand what I'm saying? Um... I do not blame that woman. Um, I think uh, she would give anything to have her son back. I do not blame that woman. And, and, you know, sometimes people don't have kids or they don't understand how it is when you have kids. You could be the best parent. You know, but kids are going to do what they want to do. Kids are going to lie. Kids are going to, you know, they act one way at home. And then when they go to school... Um, they act another way. Kids are going to be kids. And I did in some of the Instagram videos of, like I said, on the pages of people posting when he was alive. He looked like he was the life of the party. He liked to have fun. There were several Instagram videos I seen when he was smoking hookah. Now we all know that, I don't know if there's an age limit to hookah. So who knows how he was when he wasn't around his mother and his family. Okay, a typical teenager, okay? My kids started smoking weed, not my oldest, but my younger one started smoking weed at 15, 16. I didn't know what his father did. Again, he was much more involved. And when I found out, that devastated me. I cried. I was so upset because I did not want that to be the gateway drug to something else. You understand what I'm saying? Um, because I told you I had other family members in my family that had drug issues, you know, drug issues, and it started with marijuana. I don't knock anybody who smokes marijuana. I don't knock anybody who drinks, but I just for my child at that young age. And there is a drug epidemic. I don't know where you live, but now we have the heroin epidemic. We have all these kids strung out on drugs, strung out on pills. Okay, they can't cope with life. They, they, I didn't want that for my child. I did not want that for my child. I work with nurses who, one, both of her boys were strung out on her, heroin. She almost lost them in and out of rehab. I don't, I didn't want that for my child. So, you know, 
and she was a she's a decent person a good mother and the father's involved and the kids still got out on drugs so sometimes when these kids do this do, do these things it's not a reflection of what's going on at home I met a nurse in nursing school I met this lady her mother was strung out on crack abandoned her and her siblings in a house with no electricity just took off left one of the babies in the, uh, she just had a baby left it in a crack house she grew up she ended up getting custody of her younger siblings she didn't become an alcoholic and she didn't become a drug addict she became a nurse she went on to further her nursing degree very beautiful person so I, I'm saying that to say kids don't always become a product of their environment you could have on one hand kids from a good home and then they go out into the world and become a, a, a criminal then you could have kids that come from a bad home and they make up in their mind that I'm not going to be like my mother. I'm not going to be like my father. And they go on to do great things. So, it's a lot of unanswered questions, guys. And the, the truth, like I said, Junior knows what happened that night. God knows what happened that night. And those gang members knew know why they, um, you know, and they're pleading not guilty. So, who knows if they're going to admit to anything. The only person talking seems to be Salsa, so, you know, I don't expect the truth from them. Those are some horrible, horrible, horrible people. And the fact that they're in prison making those guards' lives hell, it's just, they're ruthless. They don't care. They have no regard for human life. The way the one that cut Junior's neck came into that courtroom, like this was, uh, you know, a fucking big production, excuse my language, but you know, just smirking and bopping his head back and fucking forth I don't know how Lisa, uh, Leandra did it and especially I didn't have the heart to go back because they corrected me I thought Jose Munez is the one that slit his neck but when people corrected me and said no it was the guy who was laughing and singing I didn't have the heart to go back and watch that video again because I did not want to see it again I'm sorry I seen it the first time so I'm sure Leandra knows I'm sure uh, Junior's father knows he's the one and he comes out bopping his head I I, I would be in jail I don't know if uh, I probably would have got locked up that day I probably would have got locked up that day and just sitting there and hearing not guilty not guilty not guilty when these people are on camera and I seen them kill my son I wouldn't be able to take it I really wouldn't be able to take it so from what I take from what I've learned on these past couple of days I think Genesis may know more. Maybe she's afraid to say more. Or maybe her and Leandra know more and they can't really say that much. And Genesis may testify um, that, you know, maybe she will. Okay. Um, maybe, um, I don't know. I believe Michael Salsa copped out to a deal and maybe he will get on the stand. But it, he, they have to keep him in witness protection because there's no jail that he'll be safe in. You know what I mean? Because he'll be a rat, a snitch. Um, I, I'm hoping it's not immunity. I'm really hoping it's not immunity. Um, I don't know if they'll deport him back to DR or whatever. Um, but it, he needs to face some kind of punishment. To me, importing him, uh, deporting him um, back to DR, if he's not going to be behind a jail cell, that's not punishment. I'm sorry. That's not punishment. And he needs to, he was a part of that gang, just like they're, they're uh, charging the people that was a part of the chase, you know what I mean? Um, and they arrested the gang leader, they need to make sure that he pays as well. Oh guys, it's hard to move on, it's really hard to move on, but uh, I'm going to do some more research about the Nia Wilson story and... Um, the Brittany Allgood story. And I hope you guys have a nice day. I'm going to go eat, go home, try to be present. Because I've been distracted with you guys. So you know, it's been talk. It's been talk. I'm being neglectful. But um, I do really enjoy your feedback. I really do enjoy you guys, my cyber friends. And um, 
have a nice day and let me know what you guys think one more point guys I had shared with you guys I want to say in the video last night that I had heard that someone had put a threatening message on Leandra's Leandra's door telling her to stop talking about the gangs and I really want to feel that's why she had so much police contact I mean they were right there with her at the funeral um, some interviews she did at her house the police are there so I wonder was that the why the police were there protecting her and stuff like that um that's just my take all right that's all i wanted to add